At this point in our subdivision project, we've got our lots and our road right away. Next, I'll add the actual roadway bed, and it'll be 12 feet either side of the center line or 13 feet inside of the right of way boundary. First, I'm going to switch to my roads layer, and then I'm also going to turn off the other layers that I've been using. And this just gets that other line work out of my way so I can focus on the actual road line work. On my right of way, I don't actually need this small piece across the entrance, so I'll delete that. And now I'll create the road itself using the offset tract command. Next, I'll change the line type for the center line. And I'll just do that by editing its properties. And now I'm going to create setbacks for the lots. So I'm going to switch to the setbacks layer. And I'm going to turn the lots layer back on. I'm also going to use a dashed line type. I'll use the offset track command for most of these, but I'll have to use the regular offset command for a few of them mainly these right here. So I'll start the offset tract command, and it's going to be a 10 foot offset, and then just go around and take care of the lots. Now if I try to do the offset in one of these tracks, I get an error. And that's because of these small arcs here. They fall outside of the actual offset, and technically they should not be part of the offset solution at all. But we can still do these with a regular offset command, like this. This works just like the tracked offset, but only one line at a time. And because of that, it doesn't understand corners very well and therefore can't trim off the corners like the tracked offset command can. So we need to trim these corners off ourselves and we can do that with trim to intersection. And I need to do that with these lots down here, too. So there. Now, some of these track labels need to be centered a little better. So I'll take care of that. I'll right click and select Move Track Label. Click on the tract and reposition it. And that one I went too far. Next, I'll add dimensions. And before you get too far with dimensions, you should do a test plot to see how things are shaping up when you print out. So far, I've created this drawing with a plot scale of 1 inch equals 50 feet. But when I try to print it on a standard sheet of paper, it won't fit. If I change the plot scale to 1 inch equals 100 feet, it does fit. But if we do this, then back in the drawing, we can see that the text is much larger. And actually, the text didn't get larger. What happened is the drawing itself got smaller. So here's the point. When you start working with text, do a text plot and decide on a final plot scale before you start entering a lot of text. Because if you have to change the plot scale later, the text will no longer fit the way you planned it. In my case, I've decided that 100 scale just makes the text too big and messy. So instead, I'm going to use 50 scale and I'll plot it out on 11 by 17 paper. So back to annotations. I'll use the toggle annotations command. That's right there. And just turn them on where needed.
Now, this top lot line is the same bearing for all the lots that back up to it. So I really don't need to place the bearing on every single lot. You can edit the properties of these tracks and change how each of these lines are annotated so that we can have just the distances for each of these segments and then the bearing overall. Same thing for these here, and then we'll use the bearing for the center line because these are all parallel, they'll have the same bearing. So I would edit the lot, find a particular leg, go to annotations, turn that off, and I'm going to tell it that I want to hide the bearing and I'll leave the distance there. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of these and uh, I'm going to speed this up. There's no sense you watching me do all of this. Now, technically, I guess I really didn't have to do all that, but it really does clean up the drawing a lot, gets rid of some of the clutter, and we still have all the information we need to be able to draw those uh, lots, uh, with the exception of curves, which we're going to do right now. So I'm going to switch to the curve text layer. And for curve dimensions, we have two options. First, we can put the dimensions right along the curve itself using the arc text command. So first, I'll dimension this large curve of the right of way. And to make sure that I don't accidentally pick up one of the smaller segments, I'm going to turn off the lots layer. I'll start the command and then I'll select the arc. And now I'm going to click on the ellipsis button for the first row of the inside track. And I'm going to tell it that I want to display the delta, radius, and arc. There we go. So now I'm going to turn the lots back on and turn the road off. And I'm going to dimension the individual segments for each of the lots. Now, we already have the delta and radius here, and that's going to be the same for all of these. So once again, I don't need to put that on every single one of these. But I do need to put something like the arc length in there. So let's do that. Now here are a couple of annotations that are upside down, and we can fix that by editing the arc text. Click edit and click on the arc text, and change the text direction. There. The other option for dimensioning curves is to use a curve table. Now, these curves here are too small to fit any dimensions on them. And so we can see them better. I'm going to turn my tick marks back on. So there we go. So instead, we will toggle their annotations on so that we can see their curve ID numbers. And I'm also going to write these down, and I'll tell you why in a minute. So that's C189. And this is C159. And then I would also do that for these here. Now, granted, this is a mess, but I'll fix that up in a minute. But first, now that the curve ID labels are displayed, we'll go to the curve table command and add it to the drawing. Now, if these were turned off, they wouldn't show up in the curve table. So tools, curve and line tables, and there they are. Add to drawing. We'll put it right there. Now this curve table can be edited just like any other multi-text in the program. So if there's any extra curves in there, you can delete it or update it however you need to. Now back up here, I'm going to turn these off and I'm going to put curve labels in there using text. And the advantage of that is I can put the text wherever I want to, and I can also change the curve label to whatever I want it to instead of these long labels there. So I'm going to turn those off now. And I'll just use the regular text command, and I'm going to call this first one 
C1, and I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it right there. And I need to move that. That's not quite where I wanted it, so we'll put it over there. And uh, I'm also going to put a little leader to it. So uh, check my line type. I want a solid line type, and I'm going to draw a line. And I'm going to go from here to there. And then from here to there. But when I click this one, I'm going to hold the control button down, which will give me an arrowhead. And now for this one, I think I'll just use the arc text command again. So I'll call this one C2. And I'm going to have to change the direction of that. And there we go. Now, since I've done that, I need to come down here to my curve table and change these values to match what I just had there. So C1 was curve 159. So I'll change that to C1. And 189 was curve 2. And of course, I would come up here and do the same thing with these. Now, if any of the values of these curves change later on, you'll also have to manually change the annotations here in the curve table and along the arcs. Curve annotations do not automatically update like the line annotations do. So it's best to hold off on annotating your curves until later in the project when you're fairly sure that your design is stable. So let's sit back and review what we've done so far. We've drawn up a parcel using the deed reader and then drew in a road right of way. Next, we used the site calculator to get a feel for how many lots we can expect to create and then used a combination of routines to create our lots, each lot being exactly the same acreage and where all internal lot lines are nice and perpendicular to the right of way lines. We then created setback lines and then line and curve annotations. The project may not be finished yet, but it's well on its way and only in about 30 minutes. So if you're considering a purchase, I hope these videos have shown you what this software can do for you and your business. And if you already use our software, I hope that I've been able to show you some new methods that perhaps you haven't thought of yet to help you be more productive. If you have additional questions, please let us know. If you would like to find out more about our software products, please visit us at www.agtcad.com.